In the spirit of Chesterton's fence, what are your thoughts on Bill Gates' intention to eradicate mosquitoes? Deepest respects. I have learned so much from the both of you. Uh, let me start with, with the eradication of mosquitoes thing, yeah. which I think we have talked about before. I didn't actually know it was part of the, the Gates goal, um, but I've heard it from a variety of people. Uh, and every time I hear it, I think, I wonder if the person saying it has any idea how many species of mosquitoes there are. And I'm pretty sure that I've never heard this proposed by someone who actually understands biology at a level that would be warranted to make such a claim. Um, you know, like I don't, I don't think that these claims of bringing back the woolly mammoth are legit for different reasons. But at least the woolly mammoth was a species, right? Um, that does have a close, close issue. You don't think it's acceptable to do it, or you don't think it's plausible. I didn't say acceptable. I, I don't think you said legit. I'm just trying to yeah. figure out what you mean. Um, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I, I think when you look at what they're actually claiming to do, yeah, they're, they're not. Oh, um, cool stuff happening out the window. Yeah. Um, um, I just I, when you actually look at what they're doing, they're not actually talking about bringing back the woolly mammoth. That's so. I I, I question those claims for different reasons um, than oh, what we need to do is eradicate the mosquito. The mosquito, not a thing. So there is a clade of mosquitoes, also pretty speciose, um, Anopheles, that are in fact responsible for vectoring most of the diseases that are known to be mosquito vectored. I think Aedes, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it, A-E-D-E-S, is another smaller clade of mosquitoes that also vectors some. But Anopheles vector uh, malaria and dengue and yellow fever and Zika and on and on and on and on, a bunch more that I'm just not remembering at the moment. And I don't know how you would, but at the very least, any any proposal that begins with eradicate the mosquito has revealed such a naivete about what is actually going on that you should not trust those people. Right. But even, we don't even know whether or not this is the Gates Foundation saying eradicate the mosquito or this is somebody uh, doing shorthand on Sure, you know. I, and, I, and I'm not making, I'm not taking a position on that. So that's that's point one: is that if someone does say, "Oh, we just want to eradicate the mosquito," then you, you know, you know that they don't really or know they, what they, they're talking about. I've heard people say, "Eradicate." Would it be all right to eradicate mosquitoes? That's what they say, which is tantamount to the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. From from my perspective, it's the same thing. Um, if you were able to collapse it down to still a gigantically large number of individuals and still a fairly large number of species of mosquitoes that are actually known to vector diseases that, um, that cause a tremendous amount of human um, disease and death, I'm still not sure you should, and I'm specifically not sure you can, but at least now we're in the realm of maybe we can talk about this. Now, I, what I don't know... I don't know a lot of things, but one thing I don't know is in those places where Anopheles exist, for instance, in um, tropical Latin America, um, where there are all of those diseases um, that are vectored by, um, by Anopheles mosquitoes, I don't know what fraction of the biomass of mosquitoes is made up by Anopheles. So the fact is that bats and other insectivorous animals, um, including many birds, rely on mosquitoes um, to exist. And if you take out a giant chunk, then you're starting to lose insectivorous um, birds and bats, and then you're starting to lose the organisms that eat those, and you know pretty soon you have a trophic cascade that has collapsed. If Anopheles are 2% of the biomass of the mosquitoes in the places where they exist, maybe you could do that without effect. Maybe not. How is it that we are actually supposed to make these assessments? Um, it's, it's entirely going to be theoretical models because you can't actually do it unless you've done it, and then, um, then you've got a, potentially a problem. So I, I, wor I worry about interventions like this. But yeah, I worry about them too. Uh, I think I worry about them less because I think you know this strikes me as the hubris that nature always teaches us we're not going to be able to do it right you're not yeah. going to be able to do it doesn't mean you won't do tremendous harm in the attempt yeah but look uh, there are several dimensions here that i want to just point out yeah. need to be explored and even to begin to answer the question of whether this would be a reasonable thing to attempt one is what would the net effect be on human suffering i don't know you know 
we have an overly simplistic view of the universe. A huge number of people die of malaria and yellow fever and other diseases borne by Anopheles mosquitoes. If you eliminate those mosquitoes and therefore presumably those diseases, what happens to those people? Presumably different people die of different things. Does the human population go up because fewer people are dying of malaria or does starvation go up because there are more mouths to feed because you haven't addressed, you've addressed the malaria problem and, but you've, you know, it's an open equation. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, from the point of view of, are you willing to end a clade of mosquitoes to decrease human suffering and death? Of course. Is that the effect that would come from eliminating those mosquitoes? No clue. Could be worse. Is that the so effect? Like, it's two sides. Are you capable of doing that thing? And if you could do that thing, would it accomplish the goal that you said that you're trying to obtain? <clears throat> and the answer to both of those questions may be no. Right. Yeah. Also, what kind of harm? I mean, we've watched um, absolute numbskulls double down so many times on their idiotic plans surrounding COVID. Yep. One of those numbskulls being the very same numbskull in question here with respect to dealing with Anopheles mosquitoes. Right. Right? So the point is, okay, suppose we grant that you should eliminate Anopheles mosquitoes, and then you try, and lo and behold, evolution is quicker than you are, and it doesn't work. And so you start turning up the dose of whatever you're using or the intensity of the attack or whatever it is you're doing. At what point do we, able to, do we get to say, look, you were a dummy for thinking you could do that and you're doing all of this harm in the attempt and it isn't working. You know, how much cost are you inflicting on the world for your, uh, for your arrogance? So before you continue, I want to come back also to the first part of this question, but the very next question actually is re relevant to where you were just going, which is, the brown stink bug has invaded the Pacific Northwest this year, um, and, and this year is the worst yet. Scientists talk of releasing samurai wasps to combat them. Will more invasive species migrate, and does introducing a non-native predator work? So this is the same sort of like, okay, we're going to do this thing, or we're going to do this other thing to correct the failures or the not quite living up to potential of the first intervention. Yeah. On, first of all, every one of these instances in which you get clever about, oh, we'll release the so-and-so to catch the such-and-such -such, doesn't work. I don't know right? why she swallowed the fly. Right. Manatees didn't control hydrilla in the Panama Canal. Yeah. Uh, mongoose didn't control rats in Jamaica. The, this never freaking works. Now, it's not to say that there's no plan that could work, but the basic problem is anytime you do this, you get a predator-prey oscillation. Right? Mm -hmm. As the prey becomes sufficiently rare, the predator g gets rare because it's got nothing to eat. Either that or it's eating something else you didn't want it to. And so it's not a good plan. Yeah, which, there... which is often what happens. You bring in this predator, like, well, and its native habitat, it loves this. Like, well, it's a native habitat, it doesn't have filet mignon. Hey, look what it's got here. Right. So it starts taking off. The, so the newly introduced thing um, leaves the original introduced thing alone, which then thrives. And this now opens up more niche for that guy because it's now eating a bunch of the native um, prey items. Yeah. yeah. So look, invasive species are a problem. We do a terrible job of controlling them. The way to deal with it is to control them and then coming in after the fact with your clever pesticide or predator or whatever it is, yeah. is uh, it's a sign that you've lost. Um, it's not to say that there's no case where it has worked, but it, 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 you got to have a really good plan. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would say, though, is let's say that you found that Anopheles mosquitoes were a significant fraction of the mosquito biomass in some habitat. Yeah. Well... A, Which you've they got, might be. they might be, yeah. but B, most likely thing that happens if you were to push a button and have them disappear is a bunch of things that they were out competing grow in... Other genera of mosquitoes fill the niche. Or it might not be mosquitoes, but the point is, will you change the admixture of the vertebrates? Yes, you will. If what you've done is introduced a pesticide that goes after Anopheles mosquitoes and is not terrifically targeted in some way that pesticides never are, plausible you could, yeah. but if you pesticide your way 
towards the elimination of the Anopheles mosquitoes, I think you will see an environmental catastrophe, but it yeah. won't be a lack of mosquito catastrophe. It will be a pollutant catastrophe. So but what you're arguing is if you, if you could, if we could successfully target Anopheles mosquitoes only and, uh, and otherwise leave the ecosystem unperturbed, that something would fill that Anopheles niche without inherently being a vector for yellow fever, or dengue, or malaria, or anything. Absolutely. Um, which then perhaps the bats who are eating the mosquitoes, the birds who are eating the mosquitoes, could eat, or not as well. And so you'd get selection on the bats to move into a slightly different morphology to better eat the new thing that's in the space, or you get some of those bats dying off and being replaced by different bats who um, are better at. Yeah. Else. Ultimately, you've got trophic levels, and you've got yeah. a certain amount of productivity, and then at each level of the trophic hierarchy, you've got some number of critters profiting as much as can be done off of the level below it, and uh, so something's going to fill it, and it could make you a lot less happy, or it could, you know, be delightful. Yeah. And if if you could magically go like Anopheles gone. Like no no toxins no right. no nothing. If if there yeah. was an Anopheles gone button, would it be worth risking pushing it? I think absolutely. Mm. Does that mean it would be okay in the end? No, it might be a negative change. On the other hand, you think that risk would be worth taking, if even it, though if it was truly an Anopheles gone. Thing. If it was an Anopheles gone button with no other consequences, then yes, mm -hmm. I don't trust the people who formulate these plans. They claim they have such buttons, and they don't. Right. Um, yes, that's exactly right. But what I would, and I fully acknowledge that there, there is a risk that you eliminate the Anopheles mosquitoes, you eliminate the malaria, and the amount of human suffering goes up because right. you didn't understand that as bad as malaria is, that the number of people who were going to die of something was close to fixed, and you changed what they died of, and it, it was worse. Yeah. Right, um, that's possible. So I would say, even given that risk, I still think the chances that you improve overall human well-being by eliminating malaria it would be worth the risk of altering the habitats in which these mosquitoes exist. But all of that said, I do think there is an overarching way to do this properly, and it makes almost everybody uh, at least annoyed at me. This argument is very annoying, and I get why it is. But the argument is this. The only actually grounded way to decide what we should not and shouldn't do is to forego the idea that other creatures have rights and calculate everything backwards from human well-being, mm. right? Now, I know that this is a terrible, terrible argument because when I look at an orca or an elephant or a chimpanzee or a gorilla or a lion or a wolf or any of those other creatures and I hear that they don't have the right to exist, that it's all about us, I know that there's something morally offensive about that. However, my point would be, as soon as you say, well, the right of orcas to exist is obvious, so we must defend it, then you get immediately to the question of, well, why doesn't malaria have a right to exist, right? What, where are you going to draw the line of which creatures do have a right to exist and which creatures are we allowed to get rid of, right? And my point is that is a fool's paradise where you are going to end up in a bunch of arguments. We don't have the information in order to draw the lines cleanly. And so the surprising thing is if you say, well, human well-being is the thing to maximize, but you do it right. And the point is, not just current human beings, but human beings forever, indefinitely into the future. Do those human beings have a right to see orcas, or do we have the right to exterminate the orcas or behave in ways that will result in the elimination of the orca? Absolutely those future humans have the right to a world with orcas in it, and rhinoceroses, and gorillas, and wolves, and all those other creatures. Do they have a right uh, to a world with Anopheles mosquitoes? Well, no. Presumably Anopheles mosquitoes are not going to become a benefit to humans. The only way that they're a benefit to humans is if the ways that people die get worse if you eliminate those mosquitoes, which we don't have reason to think is true. So the point is, if you want to figure out what, what, shouldn't, what should and what should we not do, the line is, 
Do you have enough information to assert from the present position in history that a certain change will be a net benefit to humanity, which we will assume is indefinitely long-lived, right? If the answer to that is yes, then that's a change worth gambling on. If the answer to that is no, the risks are that we will make life worse and that life will be permanently worse because you will eliminate orcas and every human generation from now on will live without them and that will be very bad, right? Then you don't make the change. And this is not, an, you know, I guess the point is my instincts as a bleeding heart liberal, that there are creatures that we ought to protect for their own sake and that habitats are beautiful and we ought to protect them and that we ought to be very cautious about changes that we're going to make, thinking we're going to improve things. All of those values are actually protected best when you say human well-being in the long term is the only parameter to maximize, but you have to do so in a wise way in which you do not make stupid changes that turn out to create unintended consequences, right? You have to be certain enough of your ability to do X and not do other things that are, are going to swamp out that benefit. All of the values that I hold dear are actually best protected by this one annoying uh, shift to actually human well-being is the only thing we should be paying attention to. Well, as you know, I don't like it, but I don't have anything better. So that's where we are. That's where I've been when I've heard you give that before. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's where I am too. I don't like it either, but yep. uh, but I don't have anything better.